I've always wanted to go into teaching. I have myself come from a background that wasn't it wasn't an obvious choice for me to go to university. Um, the secondary school I went to was massively underperforming. Um, I grew up in quite a deprived area myself. And so when I found education myself and succeeded and got to the position I am now doing my PhD, I wanted to turn around and reach back and help students who were in the position I had been in. Students who aren't growing up in the same situation as many of the people I see when I attend my own university. A lot of the students who I study with come from affluent backgrounds, come from backgrounds where their parents have been to university and they already understand the system. And for them, it's a natural progression to go into university themselves. Whereas for children who come from families where university isn't a natural step or come from areas where they don't have the academic opportunities, um, I think it's really important to reach back and to help them and to support them. Um, the course is called uh, Making a Museum um, and it is one of the already written pre-designed courses from the Brilliant Club. Um, I chose this course because it deals with a wide range of, kind of eye-opening examples um, for the students to really consider um, items inside museums, whether they should be in museums and the controversies surrounding those items and to think a bit deeper about the things that they can see in front of them. I think often people walk into a museum and go, oh that's nice, oh this is this, and they don't necessarily push that understanding further. And I think for the children, realising that you can do that with a museum opens their mind up to consider actually you can do that with most things in life. Mm -hmm. Consider what's being presented to you and actually what's behind that, what's the meaning behind those items. I am a PhD researcher at the Shakespeare Institute, um, which is part of the University of Birmingham. Um, I'm currently researching a man called John Danter. He's a printer publisher who published two of Shakespeare's plays. This course has actually really made me think about those items and how they were acquired and who they belonged to prior to being in those museums. So some of those items, some of those books, belong to wealthy people who had um, profited from slavery and therefore been able to purchase the items and then their collections have been given to what was the British Museum, but that's now obviously split into the British Museum and the British Library. Whereas before I had just, like the students had with the items in a museum, just thought of it as a book. Um, so this course has kind of deepened my understanding of what I'm doing as a researcher as well. So generally before um, a session, I will use the handbook, I will read um, through the tutorial to make sure that I understand um, what I'm supposed to be teaching. That's a good start. Um, and there's also um, a document provided by the Brilliant Club that points out things that I assume the tutor who's written the handbook would like me to consider as a, a focal point or to make sure that I point the children in the right direction. So I have a read of the handbook for the tutorial. I have a read of the guidance material given to me by the Brilliant Club. And then I don't know whether you saw in my um, handbook, in the top right hand corner, I always write um, a little number um, and that will tell me how many minutes towards the end I need to make sure I turn over because it's very easy. The children are so engaged that sometimes you ask a question um, and you could spend all day discussing and debating it with the children because they will merrily put their hands up all day long answering the questions and giving you such brilliant answers that it's so hard to pause them and move on. Um, I thought the children were brilliant. Um, they always surprise me when I am looking for a particular answer and sometimes you get an answer that's a tad left field but they have knowledge that you don't expect them to have and they will put their hand up with an answer and it can be very easy to get the three points that I'm looking for quite quickly, usually within three or four points and they will, they will have their hands up. Um, I love the depth they go into with some of the topics, some, some of the places their minds go um, and the way they express their, their views or their ideas. It's always really interesting to hear what they come up with. There's a child in one of my groups who's very, very quiet, 
um, and right at the very beginning of this process he would almost hide himself behind the other children um, and he would kind of be squirreled away quite quietly and, and barely um, interact at all um, but through the sessions um, he and through the advice of the Brilliant Club um, pairing him with somebody else, somebody he feels more comfortable with. When you come into the situation, you don't necessarily know the friendship groups or the dynamics of the children um, that you are tutoring. So trying to learn more about that dynamic, using the experience of the Brilliant Club to help me to do so, and then to place him with somebody he felt more comfortable with, mm -hmm. um, as well as listening to, respecting, and encouraging his answers. I feel it's really helped him to come out of his shell um, he talks far more freely. The homework he hands in is just amazing and it shows that he's really understanding and really engaging. And whilst he might not be the child that's got his hand up all day, I know that in there the work is happening. I can see that he's far more engaged than he was. So I have three different groups, uh, three different placements at the moment. Um, so whilst I have this group on Monday afternoon, I have another group prior to that. So my weekend is going to consist of marking the homework that I have just hand to, have handed in, ready for Monday, um, and then preparing for tutorial five for two different placements um, ahead of Monday, and making sure that I really understand what I need to get out of them. As um, Tutorial five is where they start preparing for their final assignment, so the better I understand that and what we need from them, the better I can convey that to the students. Um, using the marking scheme um, and considering how I mark the students' work, thinking about their subject knowledge, the way they're structuring the work, and thinking about their critical thinking, has really made me make sure that when I'm writing my own work, that I'm using those skills as well. Just because I'm a PhD re researcher and these children are much younger than that, um, and at primary school doesn't mean that I shouldn't be using those skills as well. So that's been really helpful. I thought that, I was, I was like scared because I thought that the tutor was going to be mean, but Rochelle was actually really nice. And also I was scared that I was going to be like loads and loads and loads of work. Yeah. She always like, she's always very enthusiastic and like if we're in like a bad mood when we come in, she always make, changes our mood and makes us happy with mm. like all the learning that we do. She like, if we're stuck in our work, she helps us understand more about it. And she's really funny. She makes jokes about it and makes it more fun. She makes it more intriguing to learn about it. Um, when you when you have a question, she would usually always have an answer or even if she doesn't have time, she would say it at the end of the um, lesson. Um, that she's like she's always helping like even if you're like really you're not you don't know what to do she gives you ideas of what to do 